Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Monday, February 11th, 2019. This is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, this is a general reading in the sense that it is not specific to anything. I'm sorry, guys. I was... My attention has, was taken by the cause of some crows who have recently returned to the area. I love crows. Anyway, um, this is a general reading in the sense that this is not specific to anything. Love, career, um, sign, whatever. This is just what spirit wants to chat with us about at this moment. Um, the current energies channeling for a bunch of people. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Yes. Keep in mind that I am running a sale on mirror readings throughout the month of February. Um, mirror readings are the readings that I do for the Twin Flame weekly readings. It doesn't have to be for Twin Flame. It can literally be about anything. If you'd like any more information on that, please just go ahead and email me. You can go ahead and follow me on Instagram at divine underscore conversations. Also, you can check me out on Facebook at divine conversations 2711. So without further ado, let's get to the messages for the day. All right. So also keep in mind that energies are fluid. So just because we're talking about this at this moment in time or the uh, message is coming through at this moment in time, it does not mean it has to be specifically for today. It could have been something that we went through already. It could be something that's coming down the pipeline. All right. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. Please bring us the best messages for today, Monday, February 11th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. You know, the birds are really going at it this morning. Now the seagulls are going. And it's funny because I never really heard hear them at all i mean there there are there are quite a few of them around here and i know i know there's no such thing as a seagull i just don't know the like the real name for them but they're around and they're making noise this morning it's very interesting i'm not gonna lie <laughs> all right guys we're gonna get two more shuffles And then, oh my God, you guys. So as many of you know, I've been bowling on Sundays. And my, my fingers, my middle fingers on this hand are so sore right now. <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay, I'm gonna get one more, one more shuffle. So as you can imagine, shuffling right now is a little interesting. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, guys, let's see what we've got for today. Monday, February 11th, 2019. Shadow work. Okay. Shit, man, we're starting off strong right now, aren't we? Let's see what else we've got. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. It's a good amount of cards. Underneath the deck, we have the Emperor. Okay. So this is already, this is going to be a message for the Divine Masculine. Um, both those that resonate more with masculine energy than feminine energy. Also speaking to the masculine energy within you, potentially. But we've got Shadow Work and, ooh, Wow, shadow work coupled with the Hierophant. Mm-hmm. Ooh, this is some deep shadow work, isn't it? We also have, what else here? The, oh shoot, the Two of Swords, Divine Wisdom, whoa, you guys, and Justice. Okay, okay. So, Yes, this is a lesson and a message for masculine energies. 
And this does, if you're a twin flame, this doesn't have to mean just your divine masculine. This also could potentially speak to the masculine energy within you. Even if you're not a twin flame, it doesn't really matter. Everybody's got the divine masculine and the divine feminine energies within them, okay? Some of you resonate <clears throat> more with the divine masculine energy. Others of you resonate more with the divine feminine energy. I personally, for example, resonate more with the divine feminine energy, um, but I still have divine masculine within me, and it is everyone's responsibility to bring that into balance for the betterment of your own life no one else but yourself and your mission or the reason why you came down to this earth at this time okay now shadow work I mean I know I personally I know what this card means because I do I am familiar with shadow work but I do want to read it from the book but um, before I do that, I'll just I'll give my understanding of it. Shadow work is working with, um, yes, your inner shadow. Uh, your shadow is the subconscious. Your shadow is everything that is not illuminated, that has been pushed aside. It's your fears, it's the pain and negative experiences that you've gone through. Your shadow represents one half of the duality, which is... Um, uh, illumination and shadow, yes. Um, your shadow is often where your deepest, darkest fears are kept. Um, it's very, it's very much the rec in the recesses of your subconscious. It is any negative aspects. Well, I oh, sorry guys, I say negative lightly. It's just negative in the form of the the, the polarity or the duality. Um, positive, negative, good, bad, right, wrong, black, white, this, that, whatever. The shadow work here, well, actually, before I go any further, let me just read, because I really don't even feel like I'm doing this justice right now. I mean, I understand what it is. It's just hard to put it into words. Here we go. But let's see what this, because I want to I wanna read from the book for this first, and then we'll continue. Um, inquiry. Well, okay, here we go. Shadow work. Key words are illumination, balance, synergy, healing, and acceptance. Inquiry. What deeper habits are ready for my awareness? Where is my shadow presenting itself the most? Within each of us is a shadow self, a multifaceted inner vessel of the pains, traumas, fears, and superstitions. I'm sorry, and suppressions, not superstitions, and suppressions we have experienced throughout our life. Very often, we think of the shadow as something negative or malevolent, as the world uh, uh, itself conjures up themes of darkness or fear. But if we look a bit closer, we may find that our shadows are the ultimate liberators, acting as the most profound catalysts for aligning with our truth. Like the dark matter of our universe and the great cosmic womb, dreams and seeds of light may be cultivated here as healing and creation may be birthed through cycles and doorways of revolutionary change our shadows can help anchor our own brilliance and self-worth in teaching us to rise and transmute from the ashes that divide us from within this may happen when we release our hidden burdens or remove the masks or of the personas we continuously hide behind, allowing us to dive deeper within the waters of our heart. The obscure aspects of our shadow also show us where our thoughts or habits have become entrenched or addictive over time, which is helpful when looking at how and where we may need to make some profound changes in our lives. <clears throat> so, uh, I'll read this one last thing. Shadow work gives us an opportunity to explore the contrasts within our lives we have taught that have taught us the most profound lessons along the way. So, with all of that said, shadow work is coming out with the hierophant. Mm -hmm. Status quo, uh, society, religion, institution, government, university. That kind of thing. 
okay? Uh, Spirit saying indoctrination. So think about how you may have been indoctrinated, if that's a word. I think it's a word. Now, as far as the emperor goes, this doesn't necessarily have to mean the masculine energy, okay? What it can also mean is someone that is taking, pow taking their power back. Because the magician is the master of his domain, okay? The I'm sorry, not the magician. Wow. That's interesting. Freudian slip. We'll see what comes out <laughs> in the clarifiers. Maybe the magician will come out. But the emperor, the emperor is about taking your power back because the emperor is the king of kings. The emperor is the master of his domain. So we could be talking about the inner masculine energy within you, but we also could be talking about you taking your power back from situations, circumstances like institution here, the Hierophant, and doing the shadow work associated with it. And in, that, in this case, that shadow work is learning the lesson associated with whatever, whatever it is you've gone through. What is that teaching you? What is that showing about your thoughts, beliefs about yourself, beliefs about the world around you? How can you improve on your life? Use this as a stepping stone to have greater authenticity, to have greater um, um, autonomy within your life. Now, moving forward, we have the Two of Swords, Divine Wisdom, and Justice. Shadow Work and Divine Wisdom are two cards that are unique to this, uh, two of a few cards that are unique to this deck. Divine Wisdom talks about what is it that you're learning from this situation. And actually, you know what? Just to be fair, I'm going to read from this from the book as well. Because again, I don't want to not do this justice. Okay. Divine wisdom, keywords, akasha, awakening, higher self, unity, expansion. Inquiry, how is the universe expressing its wisdom to me? What new forms of knowledge awaken within me now? The divine, I'm sorry, the, flood, the floodgates are beginning to open as the seated wisdom of the ancient mysteries are now pouring through. This is the divine knowledge that exists within our cellular memory and the power of your own unique story. You may be experiencing a breakdown of the artificial structures that wish to fall by the wayside as new forms of wisdom stir within your heart. Now, pause for a second. A breakdown of the artificial structures that wish to fall by the wayside. That would be this, what this represents, the Hierophant. This could be a corporate job. This could be um, uh, a a social group, really, anything that is um, clicky, something that may be elitist, um, very dogmatic, rooted in um, you know, rooted in dogma, uh, you know, indoctrination is a word that, that keeps coming forward. Um, the status quo, you know, the society, the norm, the standard, you know, what we've all been holding ourselves to in this like matrix reality that doesn't necessarily speak to who we truly are. Okay, that's this, that's what this is speaking about here. The artificial structures that wish to fall by the wayside. This may also indicate a deeper sense of awakening as you connect with various forms of teachings, lineages, or philosophies that call out from beyond this lifetime. That's also what the Hierophant stands for teaching and learning okay so what are you learning here divine wisdom comes as a sacred reminder of the sovereign truth that rests within you waiting to be reclaimed and activated now depicted in this key uh it depicted in this key as the representation of isis the lunar goddess of ten thousand names we are reminded of the cycles of time that have birthed many sages mystics and ascended guides who have also filled our collective narrative of magic and mystery. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, so that, I'm, I'm gonna stop there, but 
Now, coupled with that, we have the Two of Swords and Justice. So, um, so we have balance coming into play. For some of you, this can either go two ways. Either some of you are taking the blindfolds off and seeing the situation as it truly is. For others of you, you're unable to see or you can't make a decision. I, honestly, the heaviest thing, the, the strongest thing that I'm getting with this is that you're, you're, the blindfolds are coming off because I, I don't read I don't read reversals, so I'm just I'm just picking up on the energies here, and the strongest thing energetically is the fact that the blindfolds are coming off. You're seeing clearly, you're seeing clearer than you ever have before. This was where you were in the past with the two of swords, um, but now either you're seeing clearly or you have the potential to balance your thoughts because twos are about balance here, okay? And, and so is justice. Justice is a card of Libra energy and Libra is all about balance, but justice is balancing the scales. And twos are about balance as well. So honestly, what I'm feeling with this combination right here, especially with divine wisdom, you know, and then shadow work, the Hierophant, all of this together is saying to me that this two of swords with justice is an ultimate form of balance. You're balancing your thoughts, you're balancing your emotions, you're, you're seeing something as it truly is and making a change in accordance with what you truly desire to experience. The emperor, taking your power back. The biggest form of shadow work that's happening right now is how you have had to conform or how you have allowed yourself to conform or what ways you, in which ways you have conformed to fit in, in some way. To, I mean, that's one way of saying it, to be accepted. In some cases, this was to get what you wanted, but sure. I mean, you know, you were following the steps but I'm but have you received what you wanted I think for some of you you've been with this two of swords here you've been blindly following what other people have told you to do how other people have told you to do it Instead of, instead of following your own truth, your own authenticity, and now you're having a moment to break out of that with divine wisdom and justice and shadow work here. This is, I mean, this is, this is a very strong message. This is a very strong energy. This is a very potent um, situation or, or time in which you can break free from the masses. That's excellent. Now, guys, keep in mind, um, I feel like some of you are asking specifically what does all this mean? I mean, this is, this has to be, that's for you to, to figure out or decide with the Two of Swords. You have to look at your life clearly and see where it is you've been indoctrinated, where it is, I don't even know if that's the right word because, but I keep, I keep hearing it, but I think it is. Um, Spirit's saying it is, okay. Um, where have you conformed? Where have you gave up your authenticity for, sort, for, it, for some sort of success? But what I'm seeing here in that situation is that success is what whoever was in a, a position of higher power decides to hand to you. Get it? Does that make sense? That's not success. That's someone giving you something that they probably have no right giving out to begin with. I mean, who, who the fuck are they? <laughs> what makes them so special, <laughs> you know? I don't know, this is a weird message. Okay, so now let's get into the clarification section here. 
Oh my god, you guys, my hand, my hand is so sore. <laughs> Ugh. Shuffling is a thing, and I have a bunch of personal readings to do today. And I'm gonna be shuffling all day, and my hand is so sore. I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so clarifying. We're gonna start with shadow work and the hierophant here. One more. Okay. Here we go. Shadow work and the hierophant, please, spirit. Just some clarification. Just some clarification. The Knight of Wands in reverse. Interesting. Mm, wow. There we go. And the Three of Pentacles. Okay. Underneath the deck, we have the Seven of Swords. So some of you are coming to terms with some sort of deception. Lies, cheating, betrayal, backstabbing, that, this, that, and the third. You're coming to terms with that. You're becoming aware of it and there there's a there's a halt for whoever this is resonating with there is a hard stop right now with the knight of wands in reverse where at one point you were moving forward um full speed ahead you were gung-ho about it you were excited you were passionate now absolutely not full stop with the knight of wands in reverse coupled with the three of pentacles here this is about self-mastery again Taking your power back, says spirit. Instead of telling or you or someone telling you how to build your structure, how to organize your life, how to build your foundation, you're doing it for yourself now. Or at least you're getting into the mind space of it. And that would require doing some shadow work here to break away from the chains of the hierophant. Now, the, 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 I'm not trying to say the Hierophant is the devil here, but I mean, I don't often appreciate the energies of the Hierophant here because I'm not about, I'm, I'm, I guess you could call me somewhat of a rebel. I'm not really into the status quo. I'm not really into doing what everyone else is doing or what everyone says I should be doing. Like, screw that. No, I don't want to. <laughs> So I guess there's a little bit of um, bias there, but what's coming through is in this reading is, again, Spirit keeps saying, indoctrination. How have you been indoctrinated? And do you appreciate it? How can you do your own self-mastery here instead of allow or allowing others to tell you what to do? Because ultimately they are not you. They don't know you the way you know you. So you have to do, if you, if you really want to be authentic, if you really want to be happy and feel whole and in control of your life, then you've got to build for yourself. Not allow someone else to tell you what to do about it. No way, that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next, we're going to go with the Two of Swords, the Divine Wisdom and Justice. Now, before I go forward, any forward though, any more forward, the Three of Pentacles is about teamwork, potentially. But here, I keep hearing indoctrination, but here this is about analyzing this teamwork that you've been doing. I'm also, I'm really feeling a corporate environment right now for someone. That's a very strong energy at the moment. Mm hmm Okay. Moving forward. Two of Swords, Divine Wisdom, and Justice. Let's get some clarification on that, please. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Wow. Underneath the deck, you have the Six of Pentacles. Yes, that makes sense. Reciprocity. Is this situation balanced between give and take? I doubt it. All right, all right, we've got, wow. Okay, so we have the Page of Pentacles in reverse with the Seven of Wands here. So the Page of Pentacles is an energy of being honest, hardworking, 
committed to a something. <clears throat> but here, what I'm getting with this, between the Page of Pentacles in reverse and the Seven of Wands, someone is pulling back their support for something or someone and is putting up some firmer boundaries, okay? Um, there was a tower moment in the past. There was a moment that, uh, there was a moment of realization. And I think what happened is ultimately you, someone with the Queen of Pentacles here and the Five of Pentacles, someone decided to nurture themselves and not allow themselves to feel left out in the cold or rejected in some way any longer. Okay? That's what this tower moment brought into perspective for you, which I really feel like, whoever this resonates for, I really feel like that's what... Um, that's what's pushing you into this whole the emperor situation, wanting to take power control, take your life back, okay? The emperor can be a very controlling figure. So you could be um, understanding how you've been under someone else's control, some sort of institution, or you could be taking your power back, like I've been saying. And that's what's bringing this justice into your life. Divine Wisdom. And the Two of Swords definitely was a situation where you either couldn't see what was really going on or you just refused to see. But now, not any longer. Because you had some sort of tower moment here that opened your eyes to it, that illuminated it for you. And probably did so in a way where you absolutely could not, like there was no way of ignoring it. <laughs> Ooh. And now you're looking to balance the scales with the Six of Pentacles and, and, and Justice, but also heal in a physical way, because Sixes are about healing. Hmm. Okay. So... I think what I'm going to do today is I'm going to close the reading with just a card from the Crystal Mandala deck here. Actually, actually, we're going to start with the animal spirits. Let's get some messages from the animal spirits and then we'll close the reading with the Crystal Mandala. Y'all, Lord, y'all, I don't know how I'm going to get through these readings today. And they're, I'm doing three mirror readings today. And that's, as you guys know, that's two, that's two decks. That's a lot of shuffling. My fingers are so sore. <laughs> uh. However, I did my best score yesterday. My highest score was a 138, and I am very proud of it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh man, you guys, I'm having so much fun with this bowling thing. Okay, one more shuffle. <laughs> like, you guys really care, but whatever. Whatever, we're having fun here. Okay, so let's get into the oracle message for today from the animal spirits for the energies for this reading here. One more. They say one more. Okay. One more, please, spirit. There it is. Oh, two more. Okay. One more pull. I get it. Ooh! On the bottom of the deck is Scorpion. Rawr. But we have Stingray, Horse, and Snake. Okay. Wow. All right. So...
Here we go. Stingray. Developing confidence, sense of self, or, quote, spine. Oof. Ooh. The Stingray card represents a pivotal point in personal growth. The moment has come when the Stingray must decide between the old, easy, comfortable, and familiar, or the energies of the Hierophant, and the new, challenging, uncomfortable, and famil unfamiliar. Pressure from family and friends makes the decision even more complicated. Energies of the Hierophant. No matter what choice is made now, it is inevitable that this dilemma will surface again and again as the force of Dharma growing within the Stingray is too strong to ignore. When in balance, Stingray is eager and wants to grow. When out of balance, Stingray blames others and quits. To bring into balance, one must move through the discomfort. Just push through it. You have the energies of the horse on your side to help you push through it. My, my. Isn't that convenient? Hmm. Well, fancy that. <laughs> horse. Momentum. Freedom. Expansive energy and force. The horse represents the most masterful form of earth energy within the deck. It provides us with momentum so reliable, so supportive, that you can ride on its back towards any goal, no matter how difficult the terrain. A horse personality is fully awakened, fully alive, and cannot be defeated. The horse's freedom becomes available to us when we hone and collect our energy through daily practice. Physical stamina, exercise, and mental focus, meditation, are the secret weapons behind the horse's legacy. When in balance, horse achieves anything and never gives up. When out of balance, horse runs away and feels weak. To bring into to balance, one can practice or do some strength training. And finally, we have snake. Where is Snake, there you are. <clears throat> Snake, guardian of the unawakened magic and creative potential. The snake is a symbol of our highest potential. It is said that Shakti, our creative life force, lies dormant at the base of our spine in the form of a coiled snake. Regardless of whether this image rings true for you, it's well worth considering the amount of unawakened or untapped potential within. What would life look like if you woke it up? How can you stir it from slumber? An experienced yoga or meditation teacher can lead the way. Make haste. The snake card appears when there is no more time to waste. Mm -hmm. When in balance, snake is prosperous, creative, and charismatic. When out of balance, snake starts and stops many things. To bring into balance, one must practice some kundalini yoga or meditation. All right. So now I'm going to close the reading with a card from the Crystal Mandala deck. And if you guys have noticed, this card on this, in this deck has, flipped, has been flipped over for a few days. Um, it was Saturday when I was going to, and it's, and it's authentic voice. If you've noticed this, I just want to explain to you why it's been flipped over like that, because I don't normally leave my cards flipped over like that. But on Saturday, um, I was unpacking all of my stuff to get ready to do the live stream of um, the general messages for all signs. If you haven't checked that out yet, go ahead and do it. It is actually a really great session. Lots of great stuff came out. But I was unpacking all of my cards from being at Om Shanti the day before. And when I opened the, bo the, the, the box, this card flipped out just like that. It just flipped out. And I read it and I looked at it and it was card number 17. And I've been seeing 17 a lot lately. And it was authentic voice. And it was speaking, to, it's, it speaks exactly straight up right to you know where I am in my life right now especially as a card reader and all that so um, I took that as a really cool sign and so I had left it open and face up to help remind myself that you know spirit was saying I'm on the right track so yay so if any of you were wondering why that card had been flipped out for some time that's why and if you weren't wondering oh well now you know <laughs> okay so now Let's get the closing message here for this reading. Best message, please, spirit. 
Thank you so much. All right, guys, here we go. Best message, please, Spirit. Closing message for the collective in terms of this reading here. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, I'm just going to take that one. That fell. This is one. Mm -hmm. Goddess Kali and Black Obsidian. Sacred Revolution. Mm -hmm. This is getting juicy, y'all. <laughs> okay, card number 46. Now, for, this is card number 46, so this boils down to a 10, which is a completion. Which is nice. Which is very nice. Okay. Sacred Revolution. We bring you the empowerment of sacred revolution. Revolution comes when a cycle of authority or power is ending. Boop. The Hierophant, patriarchal uh, situation and all that, all that stuff is coming to an end. Mm-hmm. Revolution comes when a cycle of authority or power is ending. It has become inadequate for the task of leadership now required, and a new order must be established in its place. It is not simply a chapter within a book drawing to a close, but an entirely new book, perhaps an entirely new genre, opening up according to divine will unfolding. In such cases, subtle changes or subtle change is not going to cut it. You need radical action to bring about the new order. That new order may be in your world or in your own being. When revolution is sacred, the new order will be that which allows you to become more of yourself to successfully attain your spiritual goals. I want to read just a little bit more. Kali, who is the, the goddess on this deck, um, I think, I believe she's also known as Kali Ma, but she's a goddess of destruction. Kali is, the goddess, is a goddess not known for her subtlety. In the spiritual tradition from which she ori originates, she is called on in times of war when demons seem to be getting the upper hand. She is the only warrior determined and vicious enough to destroy the destroyers. She is unstoppable, except for when divine consciousness tells her that her job is done. Her appearance marks a time of sacred revolution that cannot be stopped until it has come to successful completion. Wow. Um, when the oracle of sacred revolution comes to you, you can be sure that you and your life are going to change. It might feel as if your hand is forced or even if you are choosing to go with the process that it is wild and out of your control. It will be, but that doesn't make it un uh, unloving or unsafe. When revolution is sacred, it is divine love realigning your life. And although there will probably be chaos, you can be sure that the new order eventually imposed will be worth it. Viva la revolution! <laughs> it literally says that in the book right here. <laughs> look, look, you don't believe me? Look, it's right there. <laughs> okay. There it is, you guys. Um, so I hope you guys have a great Monday. Um, I am not doing happy hour tonight because I will be having dinner with some of my cousins that I haven't seen in a while. But I think I'm looking to do happy hour tomorrow night, Tuesday, February 12th. So we'll see. Stay tuned. Either way, I hope you all have a great day. Much, much love to you. And I look forward to connecting with you again tomorrow morning for our next cup of coffee. Yeah? Take care. Bye.